<sighs> all right. I spent all last month diving deep into my favorite carefully crafted fantasy world with an overly complex lore. That was a lot of fun, but that was also really exhausting. So now I think it's time to scale back a bit and return to my favorite haphazardly crafted cartoon world with an almost equally complex lore. Yes, welcome to the annual Decemberween D-List, the show where I list Homestar Runner related things and my name begins with a D. So, what part of everyone's favorite internet cartoon are we looking at today? The physical media, of course! Late last year, the Brothers Chaps re-released the long-out-of-print strongbad-underscore-email.exe DVD set in a new package, containing all six discs in a single box set. And earlier this year, they re-released the Everything Else Volumes 1-3 through 3 DVDs in a similar manner. Now, as happy as I am that these DVDs are back in print, it's the same DVDs as before. They didn't, like, remaster them or change them in any way. And I did already buy them all in their original runs. And most of the bonus features from them are already available for free on YouTube. So, as a responsible adult with a healthy sense of financial priorities, of course I didn't need to buy the re-releases. And yet, here we are. But I am really glad these DVDs are available again. If you didn't buy them the first time around, you owe it to yourself to get them now because they are jam-packed with wonderful features. 3D animated menu intros, commentaries, outtakes, abandoned cartoons, and of course, bonus females. And that's what we're looking at today. I'm ranking my personal favorites of the DVD exclusive Strong Bad Emails. Bowling. Number 7. Email Birds. Back in the Tandy era, Strong Bad makes fun of three poorly written emails. Okay, let's see if we can't kill a few email birds here with one big email bird killing stone. How are you? Why don't you make a joke? Kiss Bettina. Um, I'm fine, Bettina. Why don't you make a sentence? That's the whole thing. No other premise or gimmick, just cycling through a few that didn't provide enough material to be their own episodes, and barely provide enough material combined to be an episode. It's not bad, it's just very old school, before the females got elaborate. Homestar Runner's a total dork. Don't you think he's a total dork? I think he's a total dork! Jeffrey Gilligan. I agree. Don't you think I agree? I agree! This is reminiscent of both Spring Cleaning, which might have been produced before this, and 50 Emails, which was produced after this but released before it. And while it's not quite as good as either of those episodes, it does have its moments. For my money, Why Don't You Make a Sentence is an all-time great Strong Bad quote, and the whole thing wraps up in a foreshadowing of Thy Dungeon Man. Ooh, this is gonna be good. I hope I find some scrolls. Or maybe a flask. Get. Dagger. Oh, you stupid game! The dagger you just told me about! Hey, still less frustrating than the Hobbit text adventure. Yes, I've played it since last month. It's on Patreon. You can go watch me attempt to figure out my way through that game. That's metal. Number six, accent. Joy asks why Strong Bad doesn't have his questionable accent anymore, and Strong Bad replies by referencing another character with a borderline offensive accent. Joy, Misa, Arizona. Oh yeah? Well, Misa thinks you need to stop on talking like that right now. Uh. Look, in the real world, moving away from the original accent was absolutely the right choice for Strong Bad. Not only because that accent was really questionable coming from a white actor, but also because the later, more developed Strong Bad voice is just straight up a better performance, less monotonous with more emotional range and more interesting inflections. Maybe it has changed a little bit, but that's only because I've gotten more worldly and streetwise, right? But of course, thanks to Strong Bad's deep insecurities, with a little assistance from Strong Sad's deep pessimism, Strong Bad becomes worried that this trend will give way to a more boring voice in the future. According to my projections, at the rate your accent is changing now, in five years you'll sound like this. Oh, hey all of you guys. I gotta save my weird accent! 
Wait, I'm gonna have a floating computer in five years? I mean, maybe Strong Bad ended up having the Zappy in 2012, but since that was during the time of the Great Darkness, we'll never know. I've called in a specialist. Hey there, Springboard! I'm here to help you with your orc scent! Oh, that's right, baby! It's the old reverse adorb well done gambit! First, we gotta figure out what makes your accent unique, and then exorgerate the behoozits out of it! But, you know, way, way, way more violent than a job well done. That just had Clockwork Orange psychological torture. This has physical torture. Competition. Oh! Ow! You better try it again, or I'm gonna have him start working the kidneys. I kind of love that Strong Mad will just be anybody's muscle, regardless of who he has to beat up and why. So you give him one of these. Religious corn? Nah, uh, it's a holy crop. Religious corn is how just so many Christian metal bands marketed themselves. Cardi, are you sure rubbing sandpaper on my throat is really necessary? Oh, absolutely! Of course, you won't be able to eat salad foods for a few months, but at least no one will bug you about your accent! I do like whenever Homestar cartoons go meta about their earlier, crappier cartoons, but I do worry that there are a few moments in this email where the gag becomes less ha ha, the old cartoons had dumb voice acting, and more ha ha, this accent is inherently funny, which isn't a great look. So until next time, pull the clap! But ultimately the hard work amounts to nothing as Strong Bad returns to his still gravelly but better emoted speaking habits within a week. Something something, Larry Larry! Holy crap! Ah! Ah! He's passing through. Number five, greeting cards. In an early email originally made for an independent animation festival, Strong Bad is asked how to tell an incompetent independent filmmaker friend to give up. This was long, long, long before Strong Bad's deep dive into independent filmmakers and the difference between them and indie filmmakers. We've all got no talent friends who refuse to quit chasing their dreams. Hey, that's not true. Some of us are the no talent friends who refuse to quit chasing our dreams. Please support me on Patreon, I'm a mere shell of a human. That's why I've come up with my own line of greeting cards for just such occasions. I've got ones for independent filmmakers. On this special day, I thought I'd let you know how terrible your films are. Sure, but what greeting cards do we use to tell you the greeting cards suck? Who greeting cards the greeting cardsmen? People in terrible bands. I'm sick of wasting my Fridays seeing your crappy band. This email is short, but the part where they show the greeting cards themselves does set it apart from other early single joke females. I mean, it's not like these people don't know they suck. Sometimes they just need a cute, friendly reminder. Hmm, sounds like something someone who believes deep down that he sucks would say. Is Strong Bad just admitting to his own imposter syndrome with this? Does Strong Bad himself, deep down, fear that he sucks at everything he does? Does he just wish that somebody would simply say to him, you're right, you suck, you should just give up and stop trying? Is that why he's deliberately leaving typos in this email? Typos that he would years later call other people out on? I mean, it's not like these people don't know they suck. Oh, if you want to be possessive, it's just IPS. But if it's supposed to be a contraction, then it's IP apostrophe S. Scalawag. Are typos Strong Bad's way of saying, hey, please look at me, look at how much I suck? Because he's crying out for some sort of negative feedback? Because any attention is better than no attention at all? Look, I gotta bring my own theories to this, since it's gonna be at least a few months before we find out what Alexa thinks of this. This could be the final straw that makes them give up and get some terrible office job instead. Or at the very least, go to grad school. You know, like, for an MBA. Or maybe try out for the NBA. So really you just want to replace one hopeless dream with another? Is your greeting card scam funded by Big Basketball? Big Basketball being, I guess, different town pom-pom? Ooh, look at me. I'm on TVD. Number four, comic book movie. Greetings from a kindred soul. Kindred soul? You sound like a religious metal band. You know, the kind of try and offset their religiousness with evil fonts and drippy graphics. The kindred soul is my religious corn cover band. Now, why haven't we gotten just as many kindred soul songs as tarantula songs? I've seen what they do to comic books in those movies, and it is not 
pretty. Okay, yes, jokes about comic book movies are done to death, but now this has become a fascinating time capsule of an earlier generation of comic book movies and the jokes about them. At the time this DVD was released, Iron Man and Incredible Hulk were out, but that was it for MCU movies, so this was a completely different landscape for comic book movies than the current one. First, let's go straight for the costume in a move I like to call Leather Quest 2000. People may buy that our character has radioactive powers or is from another planet, but a colorful spandex costume? Are you crazy? No audience will accept that. Nope, it's one color, head to toe leather for our hero. Yeah, it's easy to forget now that during the aughts, Raimi's Spider-Man was a bit of an outlier for having the character's costume look mostly like the drawing of the character's costume. The more common move was to drain all the color out of the costumes, or at least most of the color. And yet, despite being a parody of a pre-MCU era of comic book movies, this accidentally has one moment that is very prescient about the future of comic book movies. No actor's gonna let you put a mask over their beautiful face for an entire movie. Well, not enough. Little more. There! It's not just me, right? That's Kevin Feige. That is straight up a drawing of Kevin Feige. This female about early 2000s comic book movies accidentally caricatured the man behind the 2010s evolution of comic book movies. Instead of casting someone appropriate in the role, like Lan Handermanic, that, that's not a real actor or anything, I just like the sound of Lan Handermanic is strong bad man. Well dang, now I'm really impressed that Pom Pom managed to land him for City Comma State. I'm strong Batman. Shut up, you. Let's hear your best. Shiny, get me a Danish. Shiny, throw me that donut. Look, he's still better cast in this role than he was for Bubs. I should eat a pony. Why make a really cool costume that we can shoot and light well when we can spend way more money getting someone to make a boneless, dead-eyed, constantly wiggling CG monstrosity? That wiggling CGI cheat is both repulsive and mesmerizing. I can neither look directly at it nor look away. Then you just write down all the best story elements from the comics on some note cards, throw them up in the air, and randomly pick like 10 of them to paste willy-nilly into a paper-thin plot with more holes in it than Halle Berry's Catwoman costume. Okay, Catwoman. That's where they draw the line. That's the comic book movie that was so bad they didn't even bother thinking of a clever workaround for referencing it. They just straight up name drop it. And don't forget the horrible video game version that tries to undo some of the damage you've done to the source material. Man, just think about how much more this email would have to work with just a few years later. Strong Bad could mention, don't forget the post credit scene that teases the future appearance of an obscure character that only nerds remember. Actually, I guess that pretty much just describes most Easter eggs at the end of Speemails. <coughs> Number 3. <coughs> Videro Games. Not to be confused with the earlier Speemail 94, Video Games. That one was about what a Strong Bad video game would be like. This one is just asking Strong Bad's thoughts on video games. Video games actually teach you all kinds of new stuff. Think of all the words we've learned from video games. See, but the thing is, this female's biggest contribution to my vocabulary is the title. I keep calling video games Videro games to this day. I know it's not funny, but I can't stop doing it. Now who could forget Melee? Which I can only assume means a bunch of people's fighting. Like, all at the same time. Making fun of video games has been an essential part of internet video for basically as long as there has been internet video, so some of these jokes about video games may not necessarily be particularly unique, but I enjoy Strong Bad framing these references as positive educational tools. Plus, most video games provide a veritable what not to do of spelling and grammar. Just give a kid a video game instruction booklet and have him play Find the Complete Sentence. Until he gets frustrated, not at the tropes themselves, but at the stinginess with which the tropes are doled out. And who doesn't remember staying up all night to beat an end boss, only to be rewarded with a hearty congratulation? And they didn't even bother giving you multiple ones. Just a single congratulation they had lying around the video game make. 
place. Hey, man, you're gonna eat that last congratulation? No, man, we're putting it in the game if you beat the end boss. I do wish we got more of Wilbur and his co-worker at the video game make place. The fact that we got them at all instead of the Videlectrics guys leads me to believe that this female was produced before the Peasant's Quest teaser, even if the DVD wasn't released until after. But now I want a crossover. The laid-back Wilbur versus the high-strung good graphics guy? Let's see them in a melee. Oh, thanks. This will really lower your grandson's GPA. Number two, family resemblance. Dear Strongman, I wonder what Pom Pom's family looks like. Well, you don't need to wonder that. It was revealed in one of the very first cartoons the chaps ever animated. I mean, that is under the museum category, the same place that claims the king of town is Marzipan's dad, so maybe no character parents are canon anymore, but a few years later we would see a Pom cousin, so it can be assumed that it's still canon that most, if not all, Poms share the same basic shape. But that's not funny to think about, so let's make up some nonsense instead. Despite what he may claim, the stuff Strong Bad makes up off the dome only sometimes becomes canon. But I'm sure they bear the same resemblance to Pom Pom that my family bears to me. Okay, Pom Pom's got an orange head, so I'm sure his brother's head would look like a bulldog. Oh, so is Pom Pom's brother the dog he feeds every day? And Trivia Time is just the brand name of the dog dish? And it's the same brand name as the Trivia Time cookie jar? Oh, and another sibling might very likely be a pair of headphones with a floaty face inside. You know, because Pom Pom floats a little bit. The description of the hypothetical Pom family is a classic example of Strong Bad's commitment to the arbitrary, right up there with the creative process behind Sweet Cup and Cakes. With absolutely no discernible reason, Strong Bad makes declarative statements and absolutely sticks with them just yes-handing himself into a corner and never once backing out of it. Oh, and Pom-Pom talks in bubbles, right? So naturally his parents would be a file cabinet. Well, Pom-Pom's original real family and Strong Bad's hypothetical Pom family do have one very big thing in common. Neither of them really went on to appear again after their introduction. But this email did introduce something that would become very important to the Homestar lore, Board Electrics. Get ready! <laughs> That's right. Get ready for Chirby Scat, the classic game of Oh No You Don't. Pick a card. Don't pick a card. Pick a card now. Chirby Scat from Board Electrics is great for ages 2 to filing cabinet. The brothers chaps yes handed themselves into a board game cover, so they needed a board game company, so they decided to give Vid Electrics a board game wing. Do you think the brothers chaps had any idea when they did this that 13 years later they would defictionalize Board Electrics and release a real board game that would become the only Homestar product you can buy at Universal City Walk? What a wild path. I wonder if Pom Pom would be cool if I started putting the moves on Stella Do. She's got some hotness, methinks. That floaty face. Ooh. Oh, wait. She's just hypothetical. Why are all the best girls hypothetical these days? Yeah, I asked myself that all the time before I met my wife. And I lived in a world that actually has more than one girl character. All right, Choosy. Time's up. I'm playing Trogdor. And my number one favorite DVD exclusive oh, Strong Bad email Real Live Emails. Technically, it's an Easter egg, and technically, it's a puppet stuff, but technically, it's also a spee mail. On Disc 4, Puppet Strong Bad is asked if Disc 4 is ever gonna come out. Dear Strong Bad, are you ever gonna make another DVD? So, Puppet Strong Bad goes through the offices berating everybody who isn't done making the DVD yet. First, Puppet Homestar. I had to repeat the fourth grade. Hey, Homestar, are you recording lines for the DVD? Lines? DVD? I don't know what you're talking about. You interrupted my activity. I had Okay, to weird on. Play. Then DVD author Ryan Starrett. What's the hold up? It's hard. It takes it takes a long time. Oh yeah? Guess what I takes? These last two croissants. <laughs> then some fellow by the name of Mike Chapman. What are you doing? Hey, strong bad. I'm taking a coffee break. Ooh, is this the backdoor pilot for Coffee Town? What are you even doing for my DVD? I made all the cartoons. Yeah. I did the cover artwork. Uh-huh. I did a bunch of commentary. Boring. I invented you. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. What have you done for me lately? 
And then we get a scene where Matt had to ADR a plushie and two puppets. Deep impact. Yeah, it's a quake. It's a quake. Oh. I cannot tell from the voices who is puppeteering right now, but it sure doesn't sound like Mike. What do you do, man? Uh, I do the voice of the poop smith, Homestar. Oh my god, you're John Linnell? Well, Leonard, I guess I'll just have to burn these DVDs myself. Oh yeah, these things will be done in no time. And for better or worse, this gives us the introduction of Puppet Marshy. This tickles. <laughs> this is my favorite of the DVD exclusive spemales because I think this is the best use of the DVD medium. This is something that at the time could only be DVD exclusive. Of course, these days we get just as much puppet stuff as cartoon stuff from Homestar, if not even more. But at the time this DVD came out, puppet stuff was a little more of a rarity. YouTube was only five months old, so live action Homestar stuff on the website had to be much shorter and compressed to the size of a fluffy puff bite sized nibbler. So longer live action videos was the perfect thing for a DVD bonus feature. Something that couldn't feasibly be done on the site proper, and something that could give us an alternate venue for these characters we love, and a look at the people who brought them to life. And that's my ranking of the DVD exclusive Spemales. But what about you? How would you rank these? And what other bonus features from these DVDs do you love? Let's discuss this all in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.